Hi everyone, this is Steve Fisher here. Um, welcome to another episode of Lead Code Tutorials. Today we're going through Lead Code Problem 1207, Unique Number of Occurrences. Okay, before we dive deep into the problem, just do me a favor and smash that like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to our channel, which is dedicated to provide Lead Code Tutorials to help fellow CS um, CS students, majors, seniors, or software engineers, industry um, old veterans, just to help all of these um, CS folks to brush up on data structures and algorithm to better prepare and ace through coding interviews. All right, with that said, then let's dive deep into today's coding problem. The problem goes like this, given an array of integers, array, write a function that returns true if and only if the array the number of occurrences of each value in the array is unique. What does that mean? Let's walk through one example. Given this array in this example 1, it has 1, 2, 2, 1, 1, 3. The output is true. The value 1, so why does it return true? Let's walk through the explanation per the definition of this problem. The value 1 has three occurrences, right? 1, 1, 1. There are three ones here in this array. 2 has 2. There are two twos in this array, and there's only one. So three has uh, one occurrence. Two has two occurrences, and one has three occurrences. So all of the the number of occurrences for each different value, they are all unique, right? Three, two, one. So that meets the definition for this problem, unique number of occurrences. So it's returning true. Then let's look at example two, which is given the array one and two. The output is false. Of course, why? Because there are only two numbers. The number of value one has one occurrence, and the number of value two has one occurrence as well. So the, both of them has, have one occurrence, which means they are not distinct, which doesn't meet the definition of this problem. We're going to return false. Uh, the same applies for example three, where given this array, all of the numbers all have unique occurrences. So we're going to return true. Um, the, so we, we understand the problem of this question very well. So a very natural algorithm that comes into mind is basically to apply a hash map, right? So we need to go through this array once, at least once. So we know all of the occurrences of each and different values in this array. Otherwise, it's not going to be complete and your answer is going to be wrong. So we loop through, we iterate through this array. While we loop through this array, we're going to build a hash map. The value, the key of the hash map is going to be the value of the number, and the value of this hash map is going to be the number of occurrences of this value. Like say, in, in this given example, the hash map is going to be looking like one maps to three, and two maps to two, three maps to one, right? As I said, key is the value, and value is the number of occurrences, right? So. Uh, that's step one. We'll build a hash map to hold all of the number of occurrences. Step two is that we'll just go through the value of the hash map to see whether all of the occurrences of all of the numbers in this given array, whether all of them are distinct. If they are, we'll just return true. If they are not, we'll just return false, right? We can achieve that by simply using a hash set. That's it, which is going to help us filter. That's it about the algorithm. Very straightforward. I hope you guys can all be on the same page with me or you can follow me. Please leave me any comments below. Now we'll just dive deep directly into coding. So first, as I said, first step is that we'll build a hash map. Integer, integer, uh, new hash map. And then we'll just go through this array, which will have map put We'll basically put, as I said, the key is the value itself. And the value for the hash map is the number of occurrences. So there are two cases. The first is that this is the very first time that we encounter this value. In that case, we'll just uh, put one as the value. In other cases, this is like the first, uh, this is not the first time, it could be second or third or up to like 100 times that we encounter this value. In that case, we'll just retrieve the existing number of occurrences for this key from the map and then increment that value, put that value back into this hash map. That's it, right? 
Since Java 8, there's an API for hash map, which is called a get all default default, which serves exactly this purpose, which so we'll get this one and the default value is going to be zero, right? What does this do is that it's trying to get the value of uh, that this key is mapping to. In case that this key doesn't exist yet in this hash map, we'll just uh, supply with a default value, which in this case is going to be zero, right? Which means it doesn't exist yet for this key in this hash map. And then after we get this zero, we'll just increment it. So plus one, we put this value, this entire value as the value into this hash map, which means we have updated the number of occurrences for this value none in this given array, right? After this for loop, we have built the hash map with exactly what we wanted. And then we're just going to use another hash set just call it set for simplicity. Oops. New hash set. And then what we'll do is just to go through this hash map. There are multiple ways, like ten, tens of ways to go through this hash map. I'll just use um, a very simple and straightforward way, which is we'll just go through the key set. Map key set. What we'll do is we'll try to add the value of this hash map, which is the number of currencies, which is what we care about in order to solve this problem. Map get key. We'll try to add the value. How do we get the value? We use map get key. This one, the one that I highlighted, is going to help us get the value for this key, for this num number in this given array. And we add that value into the hash set. And we do a negation in front of it and an exclamation mark in front of it. If we can, that means if we cannot add this value into this hash set, remember the feature of a hash set is that all of the elements in this hash set are guaranteed to be distinct. So if we cannot add this value into this hash set, which means we have this value in this hash set already, right? In that case, we'll just simply return false and break out from this for loop. But if we have never encountered this case after we iterate through this entire hash map, that means we can return true. That means all of the values, all of the number of occurrences for the value in the given array are unique because we can add all of them safely into this hash set, right? That's the entire algorithm and the, that's the entire code for this problem. Now we just submit. All right, you can see it's accepted. Um, pretty good uh, in terms of stats. That's the entire algorithm and the solution for this problem. I hope you guys like it and can follow along. Um, if you have any questions or comments or concerns or any problems on Nico that you would like me to go through, um, that would be great. Please leave me comments down below in the description part. Um, I'll be happy to walk through any one of them. Also, just as a final reminder, Please don't forget to smash the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel. That would be a great, great and awesome thing. All right, with all of that said, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the next tutorial. See you guys.